role of capacity factor in HLC method development. In this session, you will learn what is the capacity factor, how is it calculated, what is its role in HPLC method development. I am Dr. Pramod from Pharma Knowledge Forum and I provide a skill-based lecture on pharma analytical research topics like analytical method development, analytical method validation, impurity control strategy, genotoxicity, chiral separation, troubleshooting, answering the deficiency later, etc. If you are new on this channel, please subscribe the channel and like the video. Capacity factor. Capacity factor is a measure of where the peak of interest is located related to wide volume peak or unretained peak. It is denoted by K. About the wide volume peak or unretained peak, I have already discussed in details in the previous video. I would like to request you to watch that video for better clarification on this topic that is capacity factor. It is calculated by the formula K is equal to TR minus T0 divided by T0, where TR is the retention time of peak of interest, means analyte peak. T0 is the retention time of the wide volume peak. If T0 is known, TR is known, then capacity factor can easily be calculated. Now question is, what are the impact of different chromatographic elements on the capacity factor? I am going to explain the same in the next slide. Chromatographic elements affecting the capacity factor. First, flow rate of the mobile phase. Let us consider in same chromatographic condition, in case 1, flow rate of the mobile phase is decreased. Whereas, in second case, flow rate of the mobile phase is increased. Hence, in first case, TR will increase. In second case, TR will decrease, where TR is the retention time of required peak. In first case, T0 will increase, where edge. In second case, T0 will decrease. But Finally, capacity factor K, which is TR minus T0, TR minus T0 divided by T0, will remain same in each condition 1 and 2. Hence, we can say that capacity factor is not affected by flow rate of the mobile phase. Second case length of the column or column length. Let us consider in case 1, length of the column is 25 cm, whereas in case 2, length of the column is 10 cm. Other chromatographic parameters are remain same in each case 1 and case Two. In first case, TR will increase, T0 will also increase. In second case, TR will decrease, T0 will also increase. But finally, capacity factor, which is TR minus T0 divided by T0, will remain same for both 25 centimeter column as well as 10 centimeter column. Hence, we can say that capacity factor is not affected by length of the column. Third, column chemistry or stationary phase chemistry. 
let us consider in same chromatographic condition in one case stationary phase is c18 whereas in other case stationary phase is c8 analyte will interact with different strength in each column that is each c8 phase as well as column containing c18 phase hence capacity factor will be different for each c8 and c18 column second example everything is the same but size of the stationary phase is different hence analyte will interact differently in each column column containing a smaller stationary phase and column containing bigger stationary phase hence capacity factor will be different for each column hence we can say that capacity factor is affected by column chemistry or stationary phase chemistry temperature capacity factor is not affected by column temperature mobile phase chemistry or mobile phase interaction of the analyte with stationary phase depend upon the chemistry of the mobile phase and consequently capacity factor will also impacted by mobile phase hence we can say that capacity factor depends upon the chemistry of the mobile phase diluent capacity factor is not affected by nature of the diluent role of capacity factor in method development very helpful in hplc method development for example if capacity factor is less than or equal to 1 in that case in a light is not interacting or very negligible interaction with the stationary phase hence we can say that that column is not suitable for that analyte or those analytes second if capacity factor is more than or equal to 1 it means analyte or number of analytes are interacting with the stationary phase hence we can say that that column can be used for separation of those analytes recommended capacity factor value is between 2 to 10 because if capacity factor is less than 2 molecule or analyte will interact near the wide volume peak if capacity factor is high it means analyte will elute away from the wide volume peak and there is a chance that peak shape will be broad that is the reason for a, an ideal method capacity factors should be between 2 to 10 in this chromatogram for each peak that is a t1 and t2 capacity factor is between 2 to 10 that is all about this session let us see you in next session if you have any question related to capacity factor 
or any of my lecture please write in the comment section and i will answer within 24 hours thank you